Hi, hello, seventh grade. I'm coming to you from my house to yours to talk about grammar. Yay. I'm trying to get excited for myself because, um, man, it feels like we've been doing this a long time and we've got so much longer to go, but it's going to be okay. We're making it through. And um, if you need a little motivation, go ahead in your documents and click on the link and listen to word crimes because that always puts me in a good grammar mood. It's my favorite. Okay. Anyways, we're going to go over our grammar. So get out your grammar packets. We are on page 209 and 210. Now, I double-checked. I had uploaded all of these papers for you um, into the documents, but I messed up the dates. So some of them weren't accessible, so I fixed it. So if you were not able to get them before, you should be able to get them now. Um, also, you need to hang on to and do not lose those packets that I passed out last week. I passed them out. I didn't realize that we weren't quite there yet. We've got a couple pages left to go in this packet before we get to the other packet. So try not to lose it because I don't have scans of that. So you need to keep that one safe, okay? All right, so get out your pages 209 and 210 contractions and double negatives. Now, I went over with you in the video before on page 209. Number one, you should... You were writing hadn't, H-A-D-N, apostrophe T. Number two was Mr. Hydorns, uh, capital M-R period, capital H-E-I-D-O-R-N, apostrophe S. And then we're, capital W-E, apostrophe R-E. Then number four is plural. Number five is singular. And number six was incorrect, and you had to fix it in a couple different ways. Um, he had never been on a cruise before is the way I would do it, but there were a couple of different ways. So let's look now at the ones that you were supposed to do on your own. Now I want to remind you that you have to send these to me in order to get credit for them. All right. So some of you, your grades are really not that great right now because you haven't been sending me work. Uh, you know who you are. Send me work. Just email it to me. Take a picture, send it to my email, read at gmail.com. If you are having troubles, um, my email is on the Ren Web. When you go to your class and you click on my class, my email's right there. And I think it gives you a link and it would open up your email and you can send stuff for your through that email. Um, or you can send things from your parents' email or your own personal email. Either way, get this stuff into me, okay? You know who you are, those couple people who are doing it. All right, so let's look at page 210. Now, it has the, it just wants you to write the contractions. This one's pretty easy. So, you are becomes your. You should have had a capital Y, O, U, apostrophe, R, E. Then number two, she is becomes she's, capital S, H, E, apostrophe, S. Now, the reason why these are all capital is because they're at the beginning of the sentence. Um, number three, I am becomes I'm, capital I, apostrophe, M. Number four, we are becomes we're, capital W-E apostrophe R-E. Number five, it is becomes it's, capital I-T apostrophe S. Number six, Kaylee is becomes Kaylee's, capital K-A-Y-L-I-E apostrophe S. And then number seven, I am becomes I'm, capital I apostrophe M. Then on the next section, we're looking for singular or plural. So singular, of course, means there's just one. Plural means that there's more than one. So number eight, the subject is he, and that is singular. Number nine, the subject is they, which is plural. Number 10, the subject is we, which is plural. And number 11, the subject is it, which is singular. So on the blanks, 8s, 9p, 10p, 11s. Now, of course, you had to find the right subject in order to make the right determination. Then here, these ones, the next ones, 12 through 16, you are writing the sentence correctly and write, if, it, if it's correct, just put a C, you don't have to do anything. If it's incorrect, you're putting an I and you are fixing it. The first two were correct. Lisa's glad about her visit with her grandparents is correct. And number 13, she hasn't waited very long is also correct. Number 14 is incorrect. It can't be they isn't comfortable at the hotel. Um, you could say they are not comfortable in that hotel. 
He isn't comfortable in that hotel. Um, they are comfortable in that hotel. He is comfortable in that hotel. Um, I would have stuck with the isn't though is or is not, but this is a subject verb agreement issue, not a double negative issue. So the problem is it should be they aren't or he isn't or she isn't. 15 is incorrect. She didn't never find her suitcase. This is a double negative problem. So it should be she never found her suitcase. She didn't ever find her suitcase. Um, something like that. Okay. Number 16 is also incorrect. Her, he aren't the pilot of that plane. Now, again, this is actually a subject of verb agreement issue. So it needs to be he isn't the pilot of the plane or he is not the pilot of the plane because he and R don't agree. And then you should have done your apply and write. I'm looking for the apply and write on these. Now, I want to make a PSA request, just a public service announcement. When you send me your grammar pages, it is very, 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 very helpful to me if you make sure that either the page numbers are visible on the picture or that somewhere in the email or in the subject line, you write down for me what page numbers you're sending me, especially those of you who are behind and trying to get caught up. That way I know, and it's a lot easier for me than, me ha than having to flip through the book. I mean, I can, I do it. But it's nice, it would be really nice and really helpful to Mrs. Masson if you could make sure that you tell me or show me the page numbers of these pages so that I know what to give you credit for. Okay, so now we're looking at pages 211 and 212. Okay, prefixes and suffixes. All right, now we've talked about word parts, especially in our vocabulary lessons. You have the root word, which is the main meaning of the word. You can add prefixes and suffixes, which change or add to the meaning. The prefixes comes before. That's why we call it pre. Pre means before. The suffix comes after the root or at the end of the word. So prefixes are at the beginning. Suffixes are at the end. So you'll see on page 211, there's a big list of prefixes and suffixes and what they mean. Now, most of these, you already know what they mean, but you've just maybe never thought about them quite this way because you just understand the meaning of the word automatically. So we have by, which means having two of or twice. So bicycle has two wheels. Bilingual means you know two languages. Um, then we have dis. Im, in, non, and un, which all mean not or the opposite of. So they all take a word and make it the opposite of what the root means. Dishonest means you're not honest. Impatient means you're not patient. Then we have miss, which is wrong or incorrectly. So mislead means to lead wrongly. Misspoke means I spoke incorrectly. Mistake means that I messed up. All right, out means to go, it's seed beyond. So outbid is to, to um, bid beyond. Someone who is outgoing goes beyond themselves um, and, and talks to a lot of other people. Pre, it comes before. Prefix means it's something you fix on before the root. Preview is to view before. Prequel is the story that happened before this story. Re means again, so rebuild is to build again. Repeat is to say it again, okay? Um, to reheat something is to heat it up again. Now suffixes go at the end of the word. So um, you have able and ible, which means capable of or worthy of. If something is believable, it's worthy of being believed. If someone is flexible, it's capable of being flexed. Um, if something is edible, it means you're allowed to eat it. And means to make. So sweeten means to make sweet. Threaten means to make a threat. Things like that. E-R and I-S-T is one who. So buyer is a one who buys. A preacher is a one who preaches. A babysitter is a one who watches the babies. Um, they don't actually sit on them, though. You know, that's confusing for some people, but... I think you get it. Then an artist is one who creates art. A pianist is one who plays the piano. 
Full, of course, means full of. This one actually is pretty easy. Thankful is full of thanks. Grateful is full of grace or great gratitude. Ish is like or somewhat. So if someone is childish, they're like a child. If something is smallish, it's kind of small, but not super small. Um, oftentimes I'll say that I'll be somewhere around 10-ish, and that generally means that I'm not showing up until 10-15. All right. <laughs> um, less is without or not having. So meaningless is without meaning. If something is tasteless, it's without taste. Um, if So that's, yeah, that's good enough. L-Y in nature or manner of. Securely is in a secure manner. Um, gently is in a manner of being gentle. Um, rudely is in a rude manner. Then we have ness and meant, which is a state of condition or a quality of. So fairness is the quality of being fair. Happiness is the quality of being happy. Sadness is the quality of being sad. Excitement is the state of being excited. Um, I can't think of another one that has meant. Excitement. Judgment. Judgment is the quality of judging. Okay, so now in the guided practice, you're going to draw a line under each prefix and circle the suffixes. So number one, there's just one. You can discover a new way to travel. You should, have, you should underline D-I-S in discover. That's a prefix. In number two, there are two. The variety of entertainment is unbelievable. Oh, wait, there's three. So entertainment has a suffix, M-E-N-T, so you're going to circle that. Unbelievable has a prefix and a suffix. You underline the U-N and the A-B-L-E gets circled because it's a suffix. Now they want you to add a prefix or suffix to the root word that fits the meaning. So the meaning they're looking for is not usual, but not. So you're going to say the unusual hovercraft uses a cushion of air. Now you could have added several, you could have added non-usual, you could have said disusual, but those aren't really words that we commonly use. Those aren't really real words. The real word is unusual. So when you're filling in the blanks on page 12, 5 through 8, try to pick Try to match together the roots and the prefixes and everything that are actually commonly used words. So that's what you're going to do now. You're going to do page 212. And yes, you need to do the apply and write. And make sure you snap a picture and send it to me. Okay? Bye.